is part 8 for my first playthrough, which is my quality build, and it is currently the 5th of October 2017 as I'm recording this. We are currently in the presence of Lady Quailana, who is Quailag's sister. She's rather weak at the moment, but I think she can be revived if we do her covenant stuff. I don't really know. I can't remember what she looks like when she is revived, and I don't know if she ever truly does revive. I really can't remember. We can join her covenant if we want to, but I don't particularly want to. There's no real reason for me to do that. Apparently I'm still in the... Actually, no, I, I'm not in the cat covenant anymore, because basically as soon as you attack anyone who is a part of the forest covenant, you will uh, be thrown out of the covenant regardless. So, yeah, that's just a good thing to mention. Now, we do actually need to up... Raid, not really upgrade, I wanted to say level up, but I did start saying upgrade, so I decided to just say it anyway. But uh, yeah, how many times can we level up? Three times, I think that was? Okay. So at this stage, we will level up our dexterity. That is going to be our next option, because of course this is a quality build. <laughs> and I really do need to start matching up my dexterity to my strength. At this stage, of course, I do have 28 strength purely to be able to use the Murakumo one-handed, as I am right now. I'm not using it to... Uh, have any strength scaling. I might use some strength scaling weapons, I'm not too sure yet, we'll have to see. But uh, at the very least, this Murakumo will primarily get its damage from the uh, deck scaling. It has like a D scaling with strength. Might end up being a CA scaling, I'm not too sure. If that is the case and it does go from a D to a C, then it will be more or less a quality appropriate weapon. But uh, regardless, we are going to head over here to an... it's actually not an optional boss. It kind of <laughs> is, in a weird way, in a really weird way. It is possible for you to get to Lost Isleth without getting rid of this lava, but it sucks. I did it a few times during some speed runs. I did used to speed run this game once upon a time. I'm not doing any of the speed run tactics, really, because it is a lazy way to play. Well, not a lazy way, because it does take a little bit of effort, but... Uh, you know, from time to time I do add a few little speed run things in there, but uh, not often. But definitely you can actually do some lava rolls. I, I can't really get my, my bearings, it's just there, it's kind of across the... I mean, if you guys can see that, see where like the cliff goes upwards, you can kind of roll to the side there. At least, I think, I don't even know where I am. I'm trying to see exactly where that place is. Maybe I'm completely not in the right place. I can't really remember. Whenever I'm up here, it's kind of difficult for me to see where is anything, or where anything is, rather, where is anything, I say. But basically, what we want to do here, if I can remember, there is definitely a tactic that we need to employ here, and it is basically just running. This is Ceaseless Discharge, and he is um, the second boss of the Soul series who has a very, uh, you know, questionable name. The first one, of course, was the Penetrator from Demon Souls, and then you had Ceaseless Discharge. I mean, yeah, definitely. But, actually, he does this attack here. We don't want to run into that. That's the one thing we do want to avoid. But we do want to continue in this direction here. At this point, we probably do want to uh, move as quickly as possible. I really should have made the decision to actually take off an armor piece so that we could run faster, maybe, you know, taking off my sword, because we won't actually have to physically attack this guy with a damaging weapon. We could punch this guy with our fists and kill him, because there is actually a way to kill this guy very quickly, and this is not a glitch, this is a part of the game, and you only get one chance to do this, because there is only one moment in time where he will actually... Oh, well, that's a thing that happens as well. Um, it's not a huge problem. That does happen from time to time if you're not fast enough for whatever reason. Uh, that's probably due to the fact that I'm kind of mid-weight right now. But yeah, just stand here, kind of by the fog gate, and he will come, and he'll do a jump thing. And when he does that jump thing, you need to attack his fist. Because at this stage, he's being stupid, and he's about to fall off because he's a weirdo. I don't know what his deal is, but he, for whatever reason, is about to fall off. Because he, like, jumped forward and, like, I, I don't know, he's stupid. The idea is that he dies instantly there. I know that looks like a glitch or something, because he just loses all of his health instantly, but the idea is that he's dead because he's fallen off. I don't know, I think that's how it works, but anyway. 
That ceaseless discharge dead, if you don't kill him in that way, he is a very annoying enemy to fight purely because he has A, a lot of health, and B, no real easy way to fight him. He's just very frustrating to fight, generally. You have to kind of, like, use the geography to your advantage and attack his stupid leg whenever he slams it down, and it's so boring. It's the most boring, monotonous, depressing fight you can possibly imagine, so I would definitely not recommend fighting him the normal way. Or rather, I mean, that could be the normal way, I don't know. But we just got a new armor set, and it is the gold hem set. I'm just seeing how it compares to what we currently have. The gold hem set is very good in terms of its resistance to fire damage. It's very good, actually. But you can see it's generally weaker than our current crimson set. We're not going to be sticking with the crimson set forever. It's not going to be that great forever, of course. It's just, for now, it is our best armor set that we have available to us, so we're going to continue to use it. We can continue down over there and fight some <laughs> Taurus demons if we want to. Long story short, I'm not going to do that, because it would be a little bit much to ask of us at this stage in the game, I think. You know, because the Taurus demons are pretty strong still for us at this point, so I'm just going to do that a little bit later. Maybe before we do Lost Isolith. We will definitely be well leveled for that when it does come time for us to go to Lost Isolith, so, yeah. I'm not going to rest at that bonfire, I'm actually going to rest at the Quailana bonfire so that we get 10 Estus Flasks topped up, and then I'm going to run back to Firelink Shrine, that is going to be the plan. Just trying to think if there's anything that I want to do on my way to Firelink Shrine. If there isn't, then I'll probably just cut to Firelink Shrine, because... Actually, no, that's a good point, because there is a certain aspect to returning to Firelink Shrine that can be confusing, because when you're going backwards through Blight Town, it can be a little hard to know where exactly you're going. So if you are using this as a walkthrough, I think I will actually keep it on camera, just for those people who are using it as a walkthrough and haven't really played through this game before. Because it can be a little bit confusing if you haven't gone backwards through Blight Town before. So I might as well just keep it in for you. I mean, I don't know, you're probably not using this as a walkthrough, but at the very least it is good if you are kind of planning on maybe playing this game, or you are maybe new to the game and you're not using this as a direct walkthrough, it might be good just to kind of give you the information, just so you can see how to do things, and maybe it'll open a few doors for you, I don't know. Maybe you're still kind of wading your way through the beginning part of the game, as far as learning is concerned, you know, there is definitely a huge learning curve for a game like this because it's all based on trial and error. And basically when everything that you need to learn is based on trial and error, almost, almost everything, about 90% of this game's learning curve is trial and error based, uh, that requires a lot of experience. Playing through the game multiple times and trying to uh, go through all areas of the game and then as you continue to fail, you will learn what works and what doesn't work. That's the whole idea. So, uh, I definitely went through some trial and error, even though I did tell you guys that I didn't have too many problems going through this game, because I was used to Demon's Souls at that time. I kind of meant that comparatively, I meant like, comparing to the people who were like, oh the game's so hard when it first released, um, I didn't really feel that way. There were def definitely difficulties, and there were times when I was confused, and times when I kind of fucked up, and times when I did weird stuff. That's always something that's happened with me in Dark Souls. Well, at least, it did happen originally. It didn't happen so much during the late part of 2012 and uh, maybe halfway through 2013. By that time, I was pretty solid with the game. didn't really fuck up, per se. But uh, during the whole year of 2011, because I think the game released kind of mid to late 2011, can't remember exactly when, but I'm pretty sure, like, based on my memory, it wasn't, like, early 2011, for instance the year had already progressed a bit of a distance by the time I bought this game. A bit of a distance, you know, I do... I am a little bit colourful and creative with my use of the English language from time to time. How you feel about that is how you feel about that, and that's uh, not really something that I can influence. I'm not going to say, no, I can I can speak well, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm not going to try and convince you. You can uh, have your own opinion about my use of the English language if you would like to. But regardless, um... Yeah, it is definitely a trial and error game, I'm not going to lie to you, this is not where we want to go <laughs> Go this way. I'm supposed to be telling you guys how to do this, and I can't even do it right myself. Oh no, it's, I'm the, I was going the right way there, actually. I thought that... Uh, I was misplaced. I thought there was a ladder against that wall, it's actually against this wall where the ladder is. I'm being really foolish right now. Anyway. 
Please don't use this as a direct walkthrough, I'm not very reliable. <laughs> there is a guy who is firing some... I, I don't even... I guess darts, yeah, blow darts, and those are really bad. They uh, give you toxin, I think. And toxin is bad news. It's, of course, more or less poison, but it uh, reduces your health even faster. But he is in the direction of... I need to roll through this just to make it faster. I couldn't be bothered killing that guy, okay? But yeah, the re ugh, the direction that he's in is more or less like the depths direction. You can get to Blight Town by completing the depths, but it is not required of you. You can definitely go this way as well. Now, I will probably kill these guys myself. Like, I'm not going to run past them, I'm just going to kill them normally. Don't know why I said myself. I mean, who else is going to do it? I just meant that I will kill them. I was glitching really hard there. I'm going to go for a backstab here. I might actually roll through this, because this is a freaking hazard. Okay. So, I had I had a backstab going on there, but unfortunately... Yeah. The geography. I mean, I don't really think I could call this geography, but the point is that the area is kind of working against me here, but, uh, yeah, anyway. I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of the Morocco mode. It's a little bit slow attacking. I don't like slow attacking weapons, but, uh, I suppose I'll just work with it. It's just something different. I don't really use the curved greatswords that much. I don't really want to fight both of you guys. That's not something that I want. I'm not going to do a jump attack there, because you're coming in from behind, so... I need to be nice and careful here. I'm not going to fight you two, because you're more trouble than you're worth. The pair of you. I can definitely do it, but it's not really worth it, so... I am just going to continue through here, because ultimately they don't drop a huge number of souls and all of that. Oh yeah, I didn't level up with the souls that I got from Ceaseless Discharge, so I should probably do that when I get to Fire Lake Shrine. Good idea. Maybe you guys were screaming at me, Use the souls! Use the souls! I mean, it is kind of annoying when you are watching the Let's Play and... There's something that let the Let's Play is just not doing, and you really want them to do it, but they just won't do it, and they won't even reference it. Like, for instance, there, if you saw me kill Ceaseless Discharge and I got a bunch of souls, at no point did I actually mention those souls, and at no point did I actually use them. You're probably just sitting there going, use the souls, use the souls, and I never even pay attention to them at all. That's the sort of frustration that uh, comes with watching a Let's Play, but anyway, just a funny little thing that I decided to talk about there. So we're about halfway through the video right now, and uh, we are now back at Filing Shrine. Let's say now a few more times. <laughs> I do like to avoid repeating terms, but it does happen from time to time, and I will always point it out, even if you didn't notice it, because I have a really poor self-esteem, but uh, not really. I don't... I just like to make fun of myself. That's part of my humour. I don't have a low self-esteem, but uh, anyway. Let's go and see... Yes, we do have a Soul of the Lost Undead. We're not going to consume any of these other souls. I could always consume the soul of the Moonlight Butterfly, because I don't think we're really going to actually use that. So that's what we're going to do. There is definitely an item that we can get by using that soul for some other purpose, but as you can see, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> you may as well actually just keep it in your inventory, honestly, because look at that. Only 1,200 souls for consuming that thing, but anyway. Let's go level up. Only twice we can level up this time. Well, let's go take our dexterity to 20. We can see how much our weapon damage is actually increasing. That's a B scaling. And leveling up dexterity twice at this stage is giving us an additional frickin' 11 points of damage in our right hand weapon. Which is pretty decent, I have to say. There's only two upgrades, keep that in mind. Or two level ups in that stat, so... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Regardless, um, we are now at soul level 45, which is a pretty appropriate number. I do like it when my soul level, or any level at all, is in multiples of five. That makes me feel good about myself, but uh, regardless, we're going to take off these moss clumps here, and um, I might actually use the great side at this point. Actually, that's one thing that I do want to do. Do want to do want to do want to do. I can, at this stage, go to the Undead Berg, so I might actually equip the great side just to kind of change it up a little bit. I don't want you guys to be bored. I do like to change weapons from time to time. So here we are, we're fighting these guys again. It's like old times, you know. Oh, I remember back in, you know, part two. This is just so nostalgic for me. Yeah, I'm sure that's how you feel about it. But uh, we're going to return to the Undead Berg and then head to Lower Undead Berg, which is a area that is not quite so optional. But it does have a boss there that we need to kill to access the depths which is a place that we need to partially go through. Now, the depths as a whole is optional. It is technically optional whether or not you go into the depths in the first place. 
However, you do really want to go there just to get the Large Ember, and the Large Ember is just so important. Because without it, you can't upgrade your weapons past plus five. So if you, if you really think you're going to continue through the game without getting your weapons past plus five, you're going to have a really difficult time. I don't know what your deal is and why you don't want to be backstabbed, but it's kind of annoying. You should stop doing it. Okay. You are a person who really wants to throw a firebomb. And I don't like that. Anyway, we are almost at the Undead Berg bonfire here. I always could have done this off camera, but... I suppose it is nice to just do it on camera, because why not? I'm not that short on time. Actually, I am kind of short on time. If I was planning on killing the Captain Damon in this video, then doing that on camera, that whole journey, was probably a bit uh, counterproductive to getting this all in one video. But anyway, let's go and rest here. We haven't actually gone up this ladder and kind of shown you what's in this direction. I mean, this is a thing going on over here, and... Uh, I suppose going this way is a good idea, because it's going to be able to get us to Lower Undeadburg faster, but uh, instead of like going the whole way to the Taurus Demon and then going past the Taurus Demon, boss, and blah, 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 we don't need to do that. But basically, in this direction here is where you would ordinarily get to the Undead Parish. Just a bit further through there is the Undead Parish area. And then you can cut this Dragon's Tail for the Drake Sword, which is 200 raw damage and no scalings. That is pretty good for the start of the game. Everything will die in one hit. Everything's easy. There you go. You hit me. You do what you need to do, man. You pretty much can't avoid that, so don't think that you've just messed up by doing that. You will get hit by that regardless, so that is just one of those attacks that sometimes you need to sponge, receive, but uh, we use the basement key that we received on the other side of that uh, drop gate, I guess you could call that. Yeah, this is a freaking long ladder, by the way. Do not fuck this up. By fuck this up, I mean, like think, oh, it's just a ladder, I don't use ladders, I'll just drop, I'll take the damage, oh, that's a big drop, and then you die. That would uh, not be a nice thing. This is a shortcut that we can open here. Do you recognize that? If you don't, then I'll show you in a moment, because these guys want to fight anyway, so. I'll try and get past them if I can, if I can't. I should be able to, come on. I just want to open a space here, okay, I can't open a space, so. Let's just come down here, my friends, let's go. If you don't want to come down, then that's okay. I can always demonstrate the benefit of this weapon, see how <laughs> having a directly vertical attack is actually really good. There you go. It's beautiful. But yeah, this is where we are. And it's very nice that we do have this shortcut available to us. This basically means that it, when you go and fight the Capra Demon, you can quickly go to this bonfire here. Look at that freaking glitch. See that? That shit does not happen in the PS3 version. It happens in this freaking 360 version. The 360 version is so just poorly done. I have to say. Obviously, they originally did the PC version, then they might have ported it to the 360 or something, and then it just came with a bunch of glitches. Now, these dogs are annoying. Dogs in general are pretty, are pretty annoying. It doesn't matter if you're playing Demon Souls or Dark Souls, the dogs are annoying. Always, always annoying. They just don't stop attacking you. Hey, post-commentary Doom Link here. I will only be with you for a brief moment while my audio stops fucking up here. I was having some issues with it, and I also edited out a time, like a period of time, where I had stopped to go and fix it. It was still fucking up at this stage, as you can tell, because I'm still talking here, but uh, I'll try and keep my commentary related to the game while I'm talking here. It only goes on for another half minute or so. But anyway, uh, coming out of these buildings here, you will have these weird assassin-type guys. Uh, they're technically thieves, but I do get in the habit of calling them assassins. Even the thief class I call an assassin, I don't know, it just looks a little bit like an assassin, doesn't it? But, uh... Yeah, you just need to turn around and face them as the doors open, and you won't have too many problems dealing with them. It's when you don't notice them coming, and they come behind you and backstab you, that's when you're actually going to start having some problems. So, definitely, if you are aware of their presence, they shouldn't give you too much of a problem. There will be some more uh, going backwards. I was just kind of looking at the door there, I can't really remember why, but there will be more coming here. The doors will open and they will come out. You will probably see that, <laughs> because they do open right in front of you, but as you can see, one of the dogs here is appearing. And my original commentary is starting up again, so enjoy that. Basically, the upcoming boss here is only difficult because of the dogs that are actually in the room. It's a really small room, and there are two dogs plus a big kind of demon guy, and that just makes it a little bit difficult to fight the boss. It's not a pleasant boss, 
I had a lot of difficulty in 2011 with this guy. This guy was the final boss for me. I couldn't kill him. It was really, really painful. Because of the dogs. I just don't like these dogs at all. As I go through this, you might see what I mean by this being a difficult boss. But, uh, you know, because I got flinched by the dog there, I fucked up. But you need to use the uh, area to your advantage here. And if I can kill these dogs before this guy comes, then that would be a good thing. If I could possibly kill this dog here. No, see how he dodged me? Fucking asshole, man. Alright, so I'm just going to use that opportunity to, to attack you there. You need to use this staircase to your advantage, long story short. I'm going to try and hit you because I will not allow you to be alive while I'm trying to fight this demon. Basically, once you've killed the dogs, you've achieved something in this game because, or well, in this boss fight at the very least, because those dogs are just really terrible. You will be able to deal with this boss probably if those dogs are dead. You can always do some drop down attacks here. Sh check this out. See how that damage was quite considerable? Yeah, that's called drop down attacking. We've done it a few times now, and you can do it in this boss fight too. I'm going to do it again. Check that out. That's what that is. I didn't manage to do a proper drop down attack before, but I did manage it that time. I was thinking, oh, you know, that was a pretty decent amount of damage, so I probably did manage to do the drop down attack successfully, but. <laughs> Obviously I hadn't done that. There we go, we got the key to the depths from the Capra Demon. And yeah, that's pretty much how you do this. Your priority is to kill the dogs. Forget about the Capra Demon, just avoid him. Try not to do battle with him at all. Aim for the dogs. They need to die before anything happens because they will be coming at you, they will be flinching you, and they will make life very difficult for you as you are continuing through this area. I will attack you because I know you're hiding. That's, that's an instance of trial and error, you know, you learn that through dying. And you never forget, because you don't want to die again. You just, you just know not to make that mistake again, it's kind of funny, but... Uh, anyway. The depth store is just over there. Uh, I guess we'll go and pick up this item while we're here, why the hell not? Go pick that up, see what it is. Large soul of a lost undead, might as well consume that while we have it. It was automatically equipped, so I should have just, you know consumed it from my item or my I can't remember what to call this there was a way to call it as you could see I was lighting up the Estus flask to try and show you what I was referring to there but um there was a way to refer to that but I can't remember it now I came up with it in Demon Souls it was actually a term I didn't come up with it but I did realize that it existed so maybe there is a is it uh it's nothing to really call this I don't know well, it's not even that, it, it's uh, this. What is it? Usable item list, that's right. Or, at the very least, usable items, I'm not too sure. But regardless, it's always a term that I'm looking for and that I just can't seem to find. But anyway, this is a gate that you can't open from the other side. We need to come to this side to actually open that. And I guess that more or less serves as a shortcut as well. So, we're going to go over here. And I believe that you can actually buy humanity from this person, but most use that this person has is in Homeward Bones. I believe it is an infinite number of Homeward Bones that can be bought from this person. It is not an infinite number here, however. This is only a limit of, uh, I don't know how many, but regardless, we uh, can also buy transient curses from this person, and transient curses come in a limited supply in the game, and transient curses will be useful later on when we are going through the new Londo Ruins, which will be a requirement before the Four Kings boss, which will come after... And Orlando, and after the Great Grey Wolf Sif, and all of that business. But that is uh, a story for another time. How are we going for time? That is a good point. We need to end it now. I was about to go through the depths, funnily enough. I only just remembered then that uh, killing the Capra Demon was kind of my ultimate goal for this video. You know, if I can kill the Capra Demon in this video, then we're doing well. But uh, I just tried to do the depths as well in this video because I totally forgot that I was trying to uh, do well for time here. But anyway. I will see you guys in the next video. This has been part 8 of my Let's Play, and uh, yeah, it is once again the 5th of October. Catch you guys later.